Can you uh, both be or Lakshmi? Recording. Yeah. So, continuation to what I was speaking about it. So, on behalf of, on behalf of National, Ele National Federation of Engineers, for electrical safety, I would like to welcome you all for joining for today's important and timely webinar because electrical fire are significant concern in India. So I want to give you a little bit of data. There, there are around 1,943 electrical fire incident in 2020, which accounted for approximately 21% of the total fire incident that year. The recent data on electrical fires in India highlight growing concern, particularly due to short circuit. From July to December 2023, India reported 112 electrical fire incidents, resulting to 131 death and 164 injuries. This is, these are residential and commercial buildings which are affected. So electrical short circuit being the leading cause, almost 58% from these cases. One other very interesting part, if you look at NCRB saying that over 1,000 crore or more is a lost property loss. The, this figure including damage to property, homes, factory, and commercial. So 1,000 crore is lost due to electrical short circuits, various fire. Actually, these figures are quite less when we compare. Actual figures should be much more than this, but this is the NCRB data. So these incidents, the recent fire happened, one in Andhra Pradesh, another one in hospital, another one in hospital in Bangalore, very recently, and Another one, just week back in Hosur, major fire. So this is actually made us to talk about fire due to short circuit. What is it? If you see our, conventionally we always blame overloading, wrong connections, wrong, um, you know, design and all that. But there are something beyond that. That's what we want to talk today. New findings and protection against thermal effect. So we have Gopal Kumar, the president of NFE, who has been forefront of promoting electrical safety standard in India through NFE. He has traveled in the last 18 months, he traveled length and breadth of the country and did over 28 workshops, workshop for National Electrical Code of India. I was fortunate enough to travel along with him to understand the psyche of the people, how much are they learning out of all these workshops. And Mr. Gopkumar has done over 300 webinars since COVID time. And when we do the statistic, how many people we have touched through this educational webinar, it is more than 50,000 people have been attending various webinars. All this happens because people like you, whenever we announce a webinar, very positive. I'm also very proud to say our average registration of webinar is almost 450 to 500. There is no commercial interest in our uh, webinar. There is, no, there is no product promotion in our webinar. It's purely learning, sharing, and experience what's happening around us. So let's know what our uh, uh, president, Mr. Kupumar, are going to talk about uh, on uh, today's topic, you'll be sharing valuable insight and recommendation, especially focusing on National Electrical Code of India of 2023 and IS 732. Before I move on to the subject, you know, I would like to make you understand that we have an association, non-profit organization called NFE, National Federation of India for Electrical Safety. Again, this is born out of the curiosity, the interest shown by many engineers across the country in our webinars, 
which started from COVID times. And there was no association for electrical engineer, improvement of electrical safety. So in the year of 2022, end of 2022, we started NFE. And today, I'm so happy to say we are one of the fastest growing society in India. And we have over 1,500 members with seven chapter across. And for our track record, we have completed 28 workshops on National Electrical Code of India and CA regulation. And we are touching almost 30, 35,000 people through this uh, workshop. And tremendous growth. And we average, you know, we, are, we, we intend to touch 5,000 members by 2025. I'm sure if you are joined today uh, to understand about this topic, so you are very, very keen. And there is tremendous change in learning of learning. And if you are a member, you'll be able to go to the blog and revisit our uh, previous webinars. And there are huge Q&A question answers being answered. And you can see our blog of our president, Mr. Gopakumar, also. I would urge people, my friends here, to join NFE as a member because it is the cost is only just 1,000 rupees a year. And you, become, you can become a member in less than two minutes. My colleague Lakshmi and Navya, who is monitoring, she will be giving the link to the uh, society, NFE, um, as an association. I would request you because these are the token of you know, appreciation for us. Somebody becoming member, then he become passionate and he become part of our movement called Make Electrical Safe Nation. So we need you. So I urge everyone to become a member of NFE. And just going back, reviewing, you know, rewinding our recent webinar, which in August on harmonic and switching transient uh, analysis. Then we did CA regulations, panel discussion on August 24. Then we had, uh, you know, switching control, uh, control assessment on IEC 61439. Then today, the topic is fire due to short circuit, new finding, protection against thermal effect. Uh, myself, I'm Dominic, I'm from the fire industry, and uh, I've been doing this webinars quite often. And speaker, all of you know, Mr. Gopakumar is very active in BAS. He's a technical committee member of EGD20, EGD30, EGD50, and also part of National Building Code 2016. He's quite active in IEC, TC64, TC81, AC37A. So he's a quite familiar face. So I, know I, don't need, I don't need much of uh, introduction to be given. And actually, he's unwell. You know, his throat, he has a throat infection. And uh, today, after maybe four or five days, I'm able to see him on the screen. And hopefully, he will talk. But mind you, please put your relevant question only in Q&A box. And your question should be related to today's topic. OK? So we will be taking only maximum 10 questions because of his uh, uh, you know, uh, health reason uh, will not be. You know, we'll try and close this whole session by one hour fifteen minutes. Max is one hour thirty minutes. So thank you for joining once again. We have a wonderful audience today, and uh, I welcome Mr. Gopakumar to uh, take off from here. I will unshare this screen. Thank you, I'm thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic, for the nice introduction. I hope my sound is clear. Yes. Sir. Even though, you know, I'm trying to talk as low as possible because my throat is already half gone. Only 50% is efficient now. <laughs> yeah. So let me share the screen. I, I hope the screen is fully visible now. Yeah, it's full, sir. Yeah, I would also like to close the video, which will be better. Yeah. So today's topic, we are uh, uh, going to talk on protection from thermal effect. Uh, you know, it's a big subject. 
explaining the whole subject of handling thermal effect in an electrical installation in one hour probably is a very difficult subject. So generally we make presentation in two ways. One is cover the entire subject, touch up the entire subject so that the whole subject is covered. But then people only understand the like an introduction of the subject. Number two, take one of the subject and go deep into it. So today, I will be more talking on fire on electrical equipment or the electrical products more. Once when we go deep, then you'll be able to understand. The subjects are covered, uh, taken from the National Electrical Code of India, NEC uh, 2023, also from IS 732. You see, in with these committees, ETD20, we are making a lot of standards and we are educating the whole market, the whole electrical engineers community to make safe Bharat. We are spending time, we are dedicating our time for, uh, uh, you know, these awareness programs. But unfortunately, most often, sometimes the government fails to appreciate it and government try to make dangerous installation. This also is a subject sometimes we need to speak. One side we are trying to make safe nation, but on the other side, sometimes the governments are trying to make unsafe situation. That also I will try to touch up at the end of the presentation. So, protection against thermal effect is explained in clause 4.3 of IS732. So I put as chapter four, but unfortunately, you know, the presentation is uh, totally for more than 1000 slides. So uh, today we are going to talk only about protection against thermal effect. Now, generally, when we talk about uh, thermal effect, we don't use the word thermal effect. We say fire. In electrical engineering or in an electrical installation, there are preventative measures or preventive measures means the measures, the safety measures, which has to be implemented in, elect in an electrical installation, which will work before ignition of fire. The problem is, fire is after ignition. Why electrical appliance or electrical installation should create fire is the question we should ask. So the preventive measures talk about the measures which we need to implement in an electrical installation, which will work before ignition of fire. Examples are avoiding ignition of fire from electricity. These measures are preventive measures. It depends on the design, selection, erection, and verification of electrical insulation, periodic verification, maintenance. These are the subjects which we need to focus once when we talk about protection from or once when we talk about preventive measure. All these subjects are explained, the preventive measures of protecting electrical installation from a thermal effect is explained in NEC or IS 732. Please note that the word used is thermal effect. The meaning is under normal operating condition, electricity or a current using equipment or the electrical installation shall not produce a temperature which is more than the capacity or more than the withstanding capacity of the equipment or more than the capacity of the environment. So the temperature itself has to be limited by various measures so that the chance of ignition, the ignition or the protective measure, these are after, protective measures are after the ignition of fire. Protective measures such as smoke detection, fire detection, fire suppression, uh, and the reduction measures for smoke or fire extraction, fire drills, means of escape, access, all these are protective measures, but after the fire. Whereas when we talk about uh, thermal effect, we are talking about the measures which has to be implemented before igniting, ignition of fire from electricity. Unfortunately, in one of the recent fire accidents uh, happened uh, in uh, Chennai, in one of the factory, the reason which the media reported is the operator forget to switch off the switch, the, the, the switch to a small appliance or for a small test setup, the operator forget to switch off the electricity, which resulted in a fire 
which resulted in two days shutdown of the factory. So if you go deep into it, this is not the correct way. Every circuit should have preventive measure. Once when the temperature is going more than certain limit, the preventive measure should act and it should disconnect the supply. Automatically, it should disconnect the supply. That is how it is. And uh, here the subject is most often, we very rarely talk about the preventive measure. When we talk about fire, we always talk about protective measure using more and more sprinklers, detection, and all these things. Because it's a big business. More fire, more business. Whereas in preventive measure, it's, a, it's not only business of the product, but this is knowledge of the designer, knowledge of the installer, knowledge of the person who verify the electrical installation, finally decide how your installation is protected against thermal effect. One simple example is, imagine you have a lighting circuit where the total size of the light, the so total load is only maybe 2 amperes, 3 amperes. But if you put a, an MCB of 16 amperes and put a 1.5 square mm wire, of course you will be in trouble because you are not conventional system, maybe conveniently what we are putting, maybe, uh, you know, uh, people say, uh, I am using this style 16 amps uh, MCB and 1.5 square mm wire for the last 25 years, no fire occurred. These are not, this is not the correct statement. So each of the protective device has to be designed and selected, erected according to the requirement. Here, it is not the product which is deciding the safety. It is the knowledge of the engineer who is selecting the product and installing the product decide the safety of the installation. So there is a big difference in these two cases. Preventive measures, as I said, preventive measures are about the knowledge of the engineer and the protective measures are after the fire. Prevention is better than cure, all of you knows very well. Standards and code of practices are made based on science and science prevails. Products shall be used and maintained as per the standard. In a lot of cases, exaggerated claims of product may be disastrous. Sometimes some manufacturers claim that I have a wire which is made because of uh, uh, so much technology into it and my wire will never catch fire. These are the claims which happen sometime in the market. Don't believe such claims. Open the standard, find out what is written, find out which standard the product is tested for and use it according to the recommendation of the standard. That is the best way. Now coming to the point, protection against the thermal effect. There are two major subjects. The first is protection against the thermal effect itself. Here the subjects to be discussed are protection against fire caused by electrical equipment means the equipment is catching fire, how this is handled in the standard, how this is handled in a product, precautions where particular risk of fire exists. That means in a location the chance of fire, uh, the risk of fire is more, what to do in that particular case, protection against burns, protection against overheating, and arc fault detection device. Of course, our AFDD is a part of uh, protection against fire caused by electrical equipment. So these are the measures which is determining or which is protecting against the thermal effect. There is one more subject, overcurrent. Overcurrent also creates a thermal effect. An electrical installation as a mandatory requirement need protection against overcurrent. So here the safety measures are protection against overcurrent by automatic disconnection of supply, protection against overcurrent by other means. There are various means controlling the current, for example, limiting the current. For example, once when there is an overcurrent, the source itself is designed in such a way that the current is limited to less than certain amount is one of the technique. Uh, protection against overcurrent by limitation of characteristics of the supply, protection of conductors in parallel against overcurrent. So basically, there are two subjects, thermal effect and overcurrent. Today we are going to talk only about thermal effect and I will be uh, focusing more into protection against fire caused by electrical equipment. Now, 
common cause of ignition encountered in electrotechnical products ic60695 part 1 short circuits short circuit is a direct contact of live part at different potentials please note that a contact between a live conductor and earth is not called as a short circuit it is called as a earth fault so here short circuit means between the live between phase to phase or phase to neutral there is a contact uh, the reasons are uh, uh, the you know it is written in the standard included in the standard loosening of terminals disengaged contacts ingress of conductive foreign bodies and so on gradual degradation of component sudden failure of component or an internal part is the origins of short circuit identified origins of short circuit and the consequences and effects are also included in the standard protection device may not get activated the first one means the device the protective device such as fuse or mcb is not working properly it is not tripping in time is the first cause the rise in temperature is significant after very short time and may be localized the emission of light protection production of flames ignition <coughs> and the surrounding components the releasing of glowing material these are the consequences of short circuit but if we look at analyze the the after a fire incident if we analyze the uh, entire installation most often the reason is serial number 1 protection devices may not get activated or the rise in temperature is significant after a very short time and may be localized these two are the two majority of the reason for fire from short circuit this also means the first one protection device may not get activated if the protective device is working properly so then there is no chance of fire there is no short circuit because the device there is a short circuit but the device tripped as a result no fire that is the way it should the preventive measure is automatic disconnection of supply <clears throat> the second cause of fire is accidental sparks or arcs external to the product internal to the product and sudden failure of a component or an internal part which is creating the consequences are protection devices may not get activated again here also the same reason emission of light smoke and flammable gases production of flame a risk of ignition of uh, potentially explosive atmosphere ignition can occur locally in surrounding components or gases so basically uh the the accidental sparks uh, or arcs is also as identified reason the origin is identified and the consequences are recorded then the transient current then abnormal temperature rise due to over current defective contacts earth leakage and so on so basically with respect to fire from an electrotechnical product such as maybe some of the appliances which we are using in our house or maybe some equipment which we are using in our industry the reasons are very much identified it is a mandatory requirement that the safety measure has to be inbuilt in this particular equipment example for automatic disconnection there can be a fuse <clears throat> if the if there is no fuse internal then the manufacturer will tell you very clearly that fuses must be provided external example a motor the overload relay and the short circuit protections are sometime made external because there is no internal protective measure so depending upon the equipment these measures are implemented with respect to the fault and the fire a fault is equal or it is uh, proportionate to the energy used in the equipment which is proportionate to the heat arcing or resistive heat which is produced because of a fault let me skip a little bit of this uh, too much theory part what happens fire it is a energy which creates the fire or thermal effect not fire sorry thermal effect the thermal energy produced from the appliance is the reason the thermal energy is calculated as the average power multiplied by the time so i into v into power into t you can find this information in the standard 
695 part 114 so basically the standard analyze the reason for fire why this analysis is made is finally the equipment it is the responsibility of the equipment manufacturer to take the equipment for various kind of testings testing for example uh, uh, you can see fire safety you can let me show you one of the testing for example glowware testing hotware based test uh, uh, glowing hotware based test methods glowware flammability a uh, test method for end product glowware apparatus and common test procedure so basically each of the product undergoes certain test it is based on the type of the equipment the energy which is used and in case of uh, a fault uh, the duration the time with which the devices are going to operate or you know several influencing factors you can have a look at uh, the particular standard you will get a lot of idea one of the concept which is recommended or which is included or which is considered in the standard is the heat produced because of a fault if it is for less than 15 watts for a longer duration a heat produced from a fault if it is less than 15 watts it is not supposed to ignite fire no chance of ignition of fire if the heat produced is less than 15 watts if the heat produced is between 15 and 100 watts ignition can happen under certain condition and if the heat produced is more than 100 watts of course uh, electricity the equipment itself will catch fire the equipment itself will start burning this is with respect to the energy and time less than 15 watts chance of ignition of fire is less 15 to 100 watts yes it can ignite under certain conditions more than 100 watts of course it can create a fire similarly with respect to the duration so even if the peak power produced from an electrical apparatus is let's say 4000 watts this 4000 watts is the power limited the maximum power which can be used in a single domestic or an equipment which is used in domestic or office purpose the maximum power from a single device has to be limited to 4000 watts so more than that the equipments are not classified for domestic or uh, uh, similar purpose higher than 4000 watts is for industrial purpose there the test procedures are different so in a domestic or similar application even if the heat produced is let us let's say 4000 watts but if the heat is reduced to less than 15 watts in 3 seconds within 3 seconds the heat produced is reduced to 15 watts then there is no chance of fire within 5 seconds if the heat produced is reduced to less than 100 watts uh, then you can see the yellow area ignition may happen depending upon the situation so this concept gives you an idea you can find this concept in 60695 part 1 you can you will get an idea that if the protective device is operating within 3 seconds then the chance of fire is very less so within 3 seconds the protective device if it operates then the chance of fire is less based on this concept power source classification is carried out power source classification ps1 means an apparatus which uses less than 15 watts ps2 is less than 100 watts ps3 is the power source 3 power source classification especially for example the audio video equipment which is used in our houses they are made the quantification of fire fire risk is uh, you know the reduce the probability of occurrence of fire or reduce the consequence so the probability the number of fire accidents into the uh, the consequence a uh, 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 fire risk can be mitigated by a reduction of the probability of occurrence or reduction of the consequence reduction of consequence is not in the hand of the electrical designer or the electrical engineer whereas reducing the probability of occurrence is very much in the hand of the designer if the designer of an equipment or the installation or an engineer who installs the device or the engineer who 
uh, maintain or verify the installation he can very much handle or he can very much reduce the probability of occurrence thereby reduce the chance of fire the probability of occurrence can be reduced by the following factors product design and selection including the selection of appropriate materials <clears throat> containment using fire resistant enclosures and compartment boundaries the use of appropriate assembly and installation methods the incorporation of circuit protective devices and the use of detection or suppression devices so these are the measures which can uh, be included to reduce the probability of occurrence so uh, uh, participants please don't think that i am trying to take it uh, too complicated i am trying to actually trying to uh, uh, put a very very complicated subject uh, as simple as possible because to to design or to to select these devices uh, you need a lot of skill <clears throat> so based on this uh, the electrical the fire tests are carried out uh, in electrical products so small scale fire test intermediate fire test large scale fire test or real time fire tests these are carried out in the products so that means if you are buying a product which is having the isi marking you are sure that the products are tested for handling such unforeseen situation so it's very important for a buyer to see that the products are in compliance to the standard if you are buying products which is not in compliance to the standard we have no guarantee we don't know what is going to happen so basically from the product standard and its test reports the thermal characteristics of the product is known finally the product manufacturer tells you the amount of heat produced from the equipment under normal condition he tells you of course going through these all these uh, uh, complicated testing of the component is not the job of an user of course it is the job of the manufacturer of the electrical equipment why i am stressing this again and again is most of or large amount of electrical equipment electrical devices which we use in our household application are not made as per or not certified as per bi standards isi marking is not existing example is inverter household inverters there is no isi mark these these you know anybody can make and sell these are probable causes or most of the time the fires are from these kind of equipment so basically the product manufacturer should give you uh, uh, the amount of the thermal characteristics of that particular device and he tells you how to install and where to install how to ha handle the thermal effect or the heat produced by the equipment if there is any heat under normal condition the other precautions against thermal effect are precautions where particular risk of fire exist precautions against burn overheating and afdd now with respect to the equipment electrical equipment shall not present a fire hazard to adjacent material due to heat accumulation heat radiation hot elements reduction of safe function of electrical equipment protective device such as protective switch gear thermosets temperature limiter seals of cable penetration and wiring system over current insulation faults so basically these are the protective measures which has to be or with which the 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 equipment is uh, able to withstand or the equipment is already having now what do we do if you know the thermal characteristics of the equipment the first subject is to mount the equipment in such a way that the temperature produced from the equipment during normal operation is not harmful to the nearby equipment or the nearby environment because each electrical apparatus equipment during its normal operation produces heat the only point is the amount of heat may be in one product is very less may be in another product uh, it may be more but due to aging maybe the temperature the the thermal effect is more from the manufacturer's uh, uh, guidance technically you are supposed to get uh, this information so these devices has to be mounted 
within materials or i don't want to read it so basically you have to mount the devices in such a way that the thermal effect is not harmful to the equipment some equipment during operation produces arcs or sparks it's 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 inherent property that once when it starts maybe there is an arcing so such products has to be put in arc resistant inside arc resistant material or screened by arc resistant material or mounted at a distance to allow safe arc extinction so you will be able to get the data from the manufacturer's catalog electrical equipment in a single location contains flammable liquid in significant quantity of course the quantity is referred as 25 liters so if an equipment uh, which is having more than 25 liters of flammable liquid inside then we have to ensure that necessary measures are made in such a way that the liquid is not creating or the liquid is not uh, increasing the chance of fire and the equipment which is in and around the equipment during installation let's say for example during installation you are making a, a welding the equipment in and around shall be able to withstand that particular installation process there is a device called as afdd which is recommended in nec afdd stands for arc fault detection device now afdd there is a small difference of recommendation in the is732 basically the ic60364 and in uh, uh, our national electrical code in ic60364 the afdd is recommended in premises with sleeping accommodation means uh, um, where you have bedrooms in nec it's a little bit more clear you'll be able to see in the next slide it is recommended in location with the risk of fire due to nature or nature of processed or stored material example be two locations in location with combustible construction material ca2 location in fire propagating structure cb2 location and in locations with endangering irreplaceable goods such as mu museums or or heritage buildings so in if used afdd shall be placed at the origin of the circuit to be protected now this device afdd has been recommended in uh, both the nec as well as the ic60364 what happens is afdd is a device which will detect it's a very sensitive equipment it will detect the arcing continuous arcing happening in a circuit and if the arcing is more than certain energy let's say for example 2.5 amperes then the device trips please note that using electricity safe is one requirement similarly continuity of power supply is also a mandatory requirement due to unnecessarily or let's say call, let's call as nuisance stripping nuisance stripping should not disrupt the power supply the devices each of the protective device has to be selected and erected in such a way that these are operating only once when that kind of a condition exists now with respect to afdd the nec is recommending as below in premises with sleeping accommodation in bedrooms and habitant rooms in kindergarten and daycare centers for children disabled and elderly people in bedrooms or habitable rooms in barrier free accommodation for handicapped persons and in locations 1 2 3 with risk due to nature of processed food and so on uh, nature of stored material now please note that in <clears throat> nec up to 63 amps is mentioned but uh, practically no one makes uh, no companies are making uh, 63 amps uh, afdd this is what i learned from the market first of all afdd is an additional protective device which has to be used not in every circuit but in some circuit where a chance of fire could kill people if you try to put afdd in every circuit it will create only noise and stripping two years back 
one international company for their warehouse. They installed the AFDD in almost all the circuits. After six months, they realized that the, the, the uh, due to you know the amount of you know the workmanship uh, in our country, due to poor uh, terminations, arcings happen and the AFDDs started tripping. After two years, they replaced or they bypassed or they took away the entire AFDD. So <clears throat> even though there is a solution available, please use it uh, according uh, to the recommendation of the standard. Don't try to use it everywhere. So these are the measures which, which, which is uh, recommended for protection against fire caused by electrical equipment. As I said, Please note that I am not going deep into the subject because it's a very big subject because it's like connecting several standards. Once when we start with IS732, then we have to go to the next, 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 next. It goes on uh, in a large way. The second subject is protection against precautions where particular uh, risk of fire exists. Here, for example, with respect to nature of processed and stored material, Electrical locations are classified into BE1 to BE4. BE1, no significant risk. BE2, fire risk. BE3, explosion risk. BE4 is contamination risk. <laughs> so here we are talking about fire risk. So explosion and contamination is much more serious problem. So this is, uh, uh, you know, it is, it, is, it is much more serious. Now, with respect to fire, <laughs> for example, in locations where a particular risk of fire exists, the amount of electrical equipment used in that particular area has to be restricted. Don't try to put so many electrical apparatus in this particular area because there is already a chance of fire exist. The wiring and wiring in system through which if the wiring is passing through this particular area, you have to take care in such a way that the wiring, you can see, you can read wiring and wiring system through these locations are either embedded in non-combustible material, only non-flame propagating wiring system shall be used. They have no connection along the route inside the location. That means no joints in this location unless these connections are placed inside flame retardant, the flame resistant enclosure. <laughs> they are protected against overcurrent. Bare conductors shall not be used. So the last one, Bare conductors shall not be used. Let me tell you an example. Several of the industrial or medical areas, let's say hospitals, the condition where the chance of risk of fire is high exists. One of the recommendations of the standard is you are not supposed to use bare conductors. Example, the protective earth conductor. In India, we have the habit of using galvanized iron strip as protective conductor all over the plant. If you use GI strip, which is having joints, bolt nut joints, which is in this particular area, it's a violation of the standard. You are not supposed to use bare conductors. Better is to use continuous conductor, a fifth run, fifth wire for this particular application. Temperature and normal use and foreseeable temperature rise during the fault cannot cause a fire because then you have to have safety measures. Thermal cutout should be manual reset only. These are the safety measures, some of the safety measures which is recommended in locations where chance of fire is more. <clears throat> One concept which is <clears throat> included in the standard with respect to uh, the condition of evacuation during emergency with respect to evacuation, the electrical installations are classified into four types, BD1 to BD4, BD1 low density easy exist, BD4 high density difficult exist. Here, the recommendation from the National Electrical Code or from the IS732 is, authorities responsible for building construction, public gathering or fire prevention may specify which BD condition is applicable for a given building. So it is the responsibility of the fire department to tell that, okay, this building more than this much size, I categorize into BD1, BD2, or BD3, and BD4. Now, the standard tells you the type of additional safety measures required in these locations. Example, in BD2, 3, and 4, wiring system shall not encroach escape route. You know, several measures are, I'm only showing you one or two of the measures. 
wiring system shall not encroach on escape routes unless the wiring and the wiring system is provided with sheath or enclosures provided by the cable management system itself or by other means so open wires are not allowed in the escape route which is i would say very common in most of a uh, lot of buildings especially the government buildings in india wiring system encroaching on escape route shall not be within arms reach that means it should be even if it is if there is a wiring system in the escape route it should be 2.5 meters away from the ground unless they are provided with protection against mechanical damage likely to occur during an evacuation the material <coughs> the materials used wiring system in escape route shall be as short as practical and shall be non flame propagating the wire should satisfy certain requirement the cable trunking system shall satisfy certain requirement cable trays something the power track means the bus bar trunking each of the product which is used shall satisfy certain requirements example the wires which is used during fire condition the wires produce smoke so and if the smoke is thick then you may not be able to see the escape route or you may not be able to see the exit signage so what is recommended is <clears throat> the plastic material which is used it can be fr fr ls fr hf fr so many names are there in india irrespective of all these materials the only recommendation for this kind of allocation is to have a visibility or to have a uh, 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 um, the correct name is uh, not visibility but uh, um, one moment let me let me tell you yeah the light transmittance so the word used is light transmittance it's minimum 60 percentage light transmittance must be ensured that means the wires used in this area especially escape routes in bd2 bd3 bd4 should be halogen free wire not the normal wires halogen free which is a special wire similarly in locations bd3 4 Uh, wiring system that supplying safety circuits shall have a fire resistance of minimum 1 hour or 2 hours okay wiring system within the escape route shall have a minimum rate of smoke production 70 percentage light trans sorry not 60 percent but 70 percentage light transmittance means uh, <coughs> the the uh, uh, smoke concentration must be very less it should be a halogen free wire similarly there are safety measures for fire segregation within the fire segregated compartment let me skip this sealing of wiring system penetrations there are different requirements for uh, uh, taking care of the insulation one of the last measure to ensure protection against thermal effect is verifying the electrical insulation to ensure that the compliance to the standard is made there are different verification points verification starts with inspection there are about 19 points to inspect starting with protection against electric shock which is not the uh, uh, important one with respect to fire but the second one presence of fire barriers other precautions against propagation of fire and the protection against the thermal effect these it is an in point of inspection which is you can see on the on the blue 4.3 and 5.2.10 of is 732 after inspection different testings are also recommended in the standard for a normal this is for example for a normal location 10 testings starting with continuity of conductors up to voltage drop of course pat is not for the installation that is for an appliance this is the recommended testing for a normal installation for additional for special installation such as a medical location or a swimming pool or a bathroom you need additional safety measures and those additional safety measures need additional verification with the in place you know you have to have additional inspection as well as additional testing those inspection and testing ensure that the recommended safety measures are in compliance with the standard these are these the compliance the safety measures are very much recommended in the ic60364 standard which is nothing but is732 in india 
and uh, NEC uh, 2023, which explains design, selection, erection, and verification. Please note that these safety measures are impossible to integrate into one equipment. If somebody comes with saying that, look, I have a magic equipment which offers all the safety measures, is impossible. And if somebody makes a claim, it is because the person who makes the claim doesn't know about electricity, doesn't know how electrical how safety has to be achieved in an electrical installation. By saying this, I would like to take you to the, the next subject. Electrical safety, demand from the fire department. Recently, especially in last uh, uh, few, few weeks or few months, we are getting a lot of uh, uh, questions or a lot of information from uh, the market about a kind of a device, which, okay, I have put uh, two slides, one above the other. Let me show you clearly. The fire department of some of the state, not some, one of the state government started or the municipality started asking an IoT based microcontroller device shall be tested and verified NABL accredited testing agency laboratory in accordance with the recognized IS 732 2019 standard. As I said, someone claims that I have a product which is made in compliance to IS732. Basically, it's a foolish idea. IS732 is not a product standard. It's an installation standard. It tells you how to select a product, how to use a product, how to install a product, how to verify a product. Now you see this, the complete installation IoT-based microcontroller device must be used. And now the fire department of the state government is demanding every consumer to install IoT-based device, then only the fire, uh, uh, fire license is provided. Then only you will get fire license for this particular uh, device. And they say that it is based on the a notice, based on a notice issued by the energy department. You can see here 2021-114 Energy 5. If we look at this particular notice from the government, 115 from the energy department, the Annexure 1, serial number 8, it talks about an IoT-based device which is offering all these protective measures, protection to minimize risk of arcing, and you see this 1415 protective measure. I'll show you an English version. The government notice says, according to the Central Electricity Measures Relating to Supply Regulation 2010, to maintain safe electrical insulation and prevent short circuits and other electrical faults that could lead to accident, it is necessary to accurately identify sensitive factors that could cause electrical failure. To achieve this, various protection system must be integrated into electrical insulation and regular interaction. These protective measures should be, you can see here, protection from minimum arcing and the, then the final is asymmetric load. Now, if you further read this particular device, Implementing of an IoT-based microcontroller system for gathering and analyzing data will enable preventive measures to be taken efficiently. So, there is a, or there are few manufacturers who claims that they make products which is in compliance to IS732. First of all, this claim itself is wrong because IS732 is a product, it is not a product standard. And they say one black box offers all these protective measures. So, the energy department made a notice saying that there is an IoT based device, haha, -ha, very good, you install. Then the fire department says, okay, based on the energy department, you install it everywhere. Then later the energy department says that every electrical inspector should ensure that this device is installed in all the high rise buildings. So, basically, the subject of thermal effect before making a fire, there are, it is not a a, a, a solution which can be offered by one product. It is the knowledge, it is a combination of usage of multiple products in a typical situation, selection, erection, verification, so many subjects are playing important role in protecting against thermal effect. It is basically to avoid ignition of fire from electricity by design, selection, erection and verification. 
Whereas the IoT based device offering multiple safety measure is a hogwash. It's a real nonsense. Sorry to say the word. The subject serial number eight in the government circular 2021 is an example of no knowledge on the subject. I would repeat the, 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 the department who has made this particular circular, they have no basic idea of what IS 732 says or what NEC says. Sorry to say that. Various circulars from government machinery, example, electrical inspectorate and municipal fire department is a classic example of failure of government in protecting people and property. By the time you realize that this IoT based device is a hogwash, it will be too late. So be careful with products with exaggerated claims. So this is protecting the installation from uh, uh, thermal effect. Thank you very much. I hope I could give some information about uh, the, the electrical safety. Sorry for the last part because we are putting a lot of, lot of time, energy, money and efforts to educate the market in one side. On the other side, somebody coming and now IS732 is popular. Somebody coming and saying that, look, I have a box, black box offering IS732. Then everybody buy and put this particular device. This is really nonsense. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks, Mr. Dominic. Thank you, sir, with a very strong message uh, to the audience. You know, black magic box, which can prevent fire, you know, putting uh, IoT in it. What does it say? It will tell you that, yes, there are problems, but does it prevent? That doesn't say. So, there are a lot sir, of gimmicks. Uh, the, funny part, the funny part is, it says you will get an SMS. That means I installed it in my house. Somebody is getting a shock. By the time I get the SMS and open the SMS, what is the status of the person who got the uh, got the shock? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, while driving the car on the road, it'll say, you know, go at 80, but you got 120. And uh, uh, it doesn't assure you that going 80, you still be safe, and 120 going, you still be safe. So it is just a... Uh, I would say, you know, misuse of IO word called IoT in the name of IoT, you know, preventing fire. Is it possible? Truly possible? That's what the discussion today. Uh, the effect of short circuits beyond short circuit, what it is. So we have a very good, um, you know, I'm happy that uh, we've got a very good response and people are still waiting and we'll take, uh, it's five o'clock, exactly one hour. Since we started, Mr. Gopkumar took exactly 45 minutes. That is what he promised. So we'll pick up only the relevant questions that is there. And a few people have raised the hand, but uh, I will take three hands. Let me see how, whether Mr. Gopakumar are able to uh, answer those questions. So Lakshmi Narayan, I think you got the answer from the presentation. How can we prevent short circuit at home? That is already clearly mentioned. Uh, you want to take up that, sir, or uh, can we skip that? Yeah, I can, I can explain. See, it is by proper selection of materials, proper erection of uh, the different, uh, uh, different electrical materials. Then you have to test it before using, and you have to periodically test it. So selection, erection, design, selection, erection, and verification. So if you do these uh, subjects properly, of course, you get uh, a very safe electrical installation. As I said, the most often, one of the big problem which we see in the industry is oversized protective device. People only talk about uh, big short circuits, 25 kilo ampere, 10 kilo ampere, 30 kilo ampere, 40 kilo. Nobody talks about the minimum current which is required to trip an MCB. So please look at the sizing of the protective device very carefully. You are on mute, Mr. Dominic. Yeah, our chapter president of Mumbai, NFE, GS Bhaveja sir is asking, out of three type of fire test of electrical product, which, which shall be chosen as part of tech specification for an electrical equipment. Another point is, 
whether it is mandatory for ISI mark product to undergo such test. Many times it is type tested, batch tested, other indication are mentioned. Kindly explain, sir. Of course, uh, these are type test. During the design itself, uh, they have the manufacturer has to test it. Whether the manufacturer is actually doing the test or not is a subject I am still trying to uh, find out because uh, very limited facilities are there for this kind of test. Of course, all the leading manufacturers, the big brands uh, where the products are ISA marked, they actually do the test. It is not one or two tests. It's a sequence of tests. It's not limited to one type of test. It's a sequence of tests on the components which is used in the equipment, then the entire assembly itself, and so on. Okay. Um, don't put your question in chat box, please. Um, uh, you know, if you put a question on chat box, we will not go on record. I would urge uh, to put it on the Q&A box. Uh, Abhijit Lime is saying, can, can you, in short, explain difference between arc flash, arc fault, and arc flash? There is a lot of ambiguity in the terminology. Yeah. Arc fault is simple fault created in a wiring, a low voltage wiring due to a loose contact or due to some simple reasons. Basically, it can be series or it can be parallel. Basically, a series means there is a loose contact. As a result, uh, current is jumping through the loose wire. It's a very small, it's a limited, it's in a very small area. Probably you may not be able to even identify it. But over a period of time, this may be creating a, a, a fire situation. Whereas arc flash is an entirely different subject. Here in arc flash, we are talking about, uh, example, live working. So once when you do live working, first of all, live working itself is not uh, a good idea. But under certain circumstances, due to certain reasons, we may not be able to switch off the electrical installation and do a maintenance. So when you do live working, and once when the doors of an enclosure is open, or once when you are in front of a live conductor, and once when you do some kind of a work, there are chances that accidents, accidental flash, due to some kind of mistake, there can be uh, chances of flashover of very large amount of energy happens. That is what is uh, termed as arc flash. So arc fault is a local, very small energy phenomena, but uh, uh, for a longer duration, whereas arc flash is a high energy phenomena. Flash, basically, it is due during live working. This is one of the way, but we can we can compare these these two in different methods. But you know, for a simple com comparison, this is what. Sir Praveen Instar is asking for such IoT based product. What 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 a customer should do? You know, they're asking even if they there's a circular saying that every building must install. How does that awareness? How what do the customer do? In the NFE blog, we have uh, made a very clear uh, statement. We have explained the subject very well. Probably, if somebody is asking to put a device, you take uh, the, the printout or you give the link of NFE's website to the authority and tell them that this website says this product will not work. You ask them. If they still insist, then please write back to us. We can help you. Uh, Lashmi Narayan uh, is asking, is AFDD similar to GFCI? No, no. AFDD is arc fault detection device. GFCI is equal to our RCCB, ground fault uh, uh, circuit interrupter. This is the American name of RCD. Okay, Firdos, uh, you wanted to check whether your school electrical system is complies with all standards you have shared. I don't know from which city you are. Uh, there is a email ID which uh, my colleague Lashmi is sharing, the president mail ID. So you may write to him because we have almost 1,300 members. So there are specialists who can look at your drawing and check whether it is complies. So I would urge you to, you know, just uh, make a note of the email ID. Lakshmi, please, uh, you know, mark the mail ID of uh, our president so that uh, we can uh, reply to him in person. Okay. 
and also uh, most of you know mr uh, uh, gopakumar also does uh, large uh, industrial uh, uh, or electrical verific verification or audit so uh, anybody is really interested he can also you know offer his service so that's his profession basically uh, jay kumar gupta please clarify as to what is the substitute of bare conductor used for earthing in flammable material tank tank form storage or other parts of operational hydrocarbon processing plants insulated and continuous conductors that means minimum joints continuous conductor and insulated Okay, had that answer. Now Haribala is asking, it is usual practice that many homes are required with inverters and battery for backup supply at home. They they are mostly located near the entrance of the home and other you know critical area. How can we guide in such installation? Actually, it's a very serious subject. Almost uh, maybe maybe 20 30 percentage of our residences uh, houses may be having inverter and most often it is put on the on the at the entrance and if it catches fire the likely chance of uh, fire from an inverter is very high and uh, uh, I really don't don't know how to answer the question probably we can make a kind of a NFE NFE's recommendation on usage of inverter and it can be published. I hope it's, it's, uh, it's uh, subject. I think Haribala is there and a lot of people, but there are the space constraint. Um, you know, a lot of people are tenants and all that. Whether we can have a dedicated place for inverter to be placed and exposed outside rather than inside, which battery fumes are not. You know, in fact, my home I have inside, so under the staircase. So, uh, you know, it depends. If there's a guideline, uh, like I just said, if there's a guideline. Where how to install inverter, where to install, where to position, and in case there is a heat generated, how do you automatically switch on the fan or something? So anyway, it's a, it's a guideline that we need to work on this. So Pramod is asking how much minimum distance should be maintained from induction motors, three phase, uh, more than five HP controller or on off switch. Oh, I am not sure. Okay, this is not, not the subject that we spoke today. Anyway, yes. Balu is asking, what are the standard used for selection of protective de devices? If you are talking about the OCPD, it is the class 4.4 uh, 4 of IS 732. IS 732, class 4.4. .4. About OCPD, overcurrent protective device. If other protective device, uh, maybe 4.5 also you should prefer. I don't know, you'd like to take this question, which is your against is thermography. How can thermography uh, a preventive measure? Thermography cannot be a preventive measure. Thermography can be a maintenance measure. During maintenance, if there is not only thermography, you can find out hot spots by using a, either a thermo, thermal imager or you can also use the, uh, uh, the IR thermometer. So both the thermometer as or thermography can be used. It will tell you the hot spot and uh, uh, generally you have to uh, reduce the amount of heat produced in the hot spot. But if your installation is in compliance with NEC, the 19 inspection and 10 test, which I already explained, if you have already carried out uh, these 10 tests as per the recommendation of the standard, then there is no chance of hot spot. So that is how it is. If there is no chance of hotspot, so you know, creating a hot, purposely, you know, you make a mistake and make a hotspot, then try to detect it and try to do, do something is wrong. While making the installation itself, you ensure that there is no chance of hotspot. That is how these standards are made. So you are on mute, uh, Mr. Dominic. Sorry. Uh, Vishnu is asking where are the suitable place to install AFDD? It is on the final circuit. So the circuits probably to the to the uh, sockets of uh, or to the air conditioner. You see in India a lot of air conditioner fires are happening. 
more than 350 incidents are reported in last one year more than you know 400 people are getting killed maybe on the air conditioner circuits you can use it on the final circuits especially on bed vijay kumar mani very important point is raising cable tripping tool plays an important role need to be calibrated periodically this have been noticed during many cases through uh, the, the root cause analysis of electrical fire of course yes I fully agree to this. It is not only using a proper crimping tool, it is using a properly sized and calibrated crimping tool. Because sometimes less crimping, less pressure is a problem. Over pressure is also a problem. You have to use the appropriate pressure. He is asking, is there any guidance for on cable crimping tool? Uh, yes, of course, it is there, but I don't remember exactly where it is. It is there in IS 732. I don't remember the class number. So, Shivaji Biswas, so quick question to you is, I am getting neutral current in three phase. What type of device I will use to prevent it? I am sure in, uh, in if you are using only three phase, there is no neutral. But you are not talking about three phase, you are talking about three phase plus neutral. In that case, uh, due to unbalances, uh, there can be a neutral current. The, the, the best way to handle this is to, to uh, uh, make the load as much as balanced so that it can be reduced. But today's electronics <coughs> equipment using SMPS, you need to have a different treatment for that. Good. Uh, anonymous. Any, what are the standard used for selection of protective devices? What are the standards? Yeah, I already at I already uh, and 4, 4.3 and 4.4 4 of IS732. So I'll take the last question. Uh, guidelines on installation of battery charges in the parking area of the society buildings. You see, I think there is no guideline as such today uh, for guiding uh, the usage of battery charges in the society. We are trying to include this in the upcoming national national building code. A lot of discussions are going on. Uh, different ministries, ministries and different uh, organizations are discussing. I think NBC will have a good solution. Now, there's a lot of comments on chat box. Somebody says, we also have need to have similar presentation lighting protection. So I would like to draw your attention that we did recently on the lighting protection as per IEC, and all these are available. Uh, I think that is not available on the uh, blog that is there in NOP. But most of our webinar, we have covered vast subject. Uh, if you are a member of NFE, uh, I would welcome you to just visit our website. You'll find many answers to your questions, and we can revisit our uh, this thing. Even in fact, this recording, what we are talking today, also will be there in the website and it will be circulated to all the members. So a uh, wonderful session, enlightening, short and sweet. And I would urge uh, everyone to join us tomorrow from for learning, learning from losses. Again, Mr. Gopakumar will be there. It's an interactive session. It, you know, it, it is not a presentation. No, so we'll be looking at the uh, report that has come on the Grinfell uh, Tower, what is the commission report says, and what India. So we have National Building Court Chairman, Mr. Suresh, uh, former director of Maharashtra, Mr. Deshmukh. We have risk insurance, um, Mr. Kale. About, uh, then we have um, uh, Mr. Deshmukh and Abhishek Chabra from the building testing of materials. So we have a very good panel tomorrow. So I would urge everyone to come and join us at 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we will again come back with new subject. We'll uh, announce yeah. in the... Uh, there, are our few people, there are a few people who raise the hand. So there are people who raise the hand. Uh, you'll be able to speak, sir. Yeah. So I will take... There are three, Bhavinja, sir, Sandeep. Please make sure that you speak to the relevant subject. I'm asking, allowing Sandeep to speak. If you are there, Please go ahead and speak, Mr. Sandeep. You can unmute and speak. Then Sanjeev Biswas. 
Shivaji, Shivaji Biswas, if you can unmute, you are most welcome to speak. Okay, okay. that is my. Okay, Amrit Lal want to talk. I'm allowing Amrit Lal to speak. Yeah, good evening. I just want to tell that there is a guideline from uh, Power Ministry regarding EV charging for uh, high rise buildings and flat complexes. Somebody was asking about that. Yeah, yeah. Which is the guideline? This is uh, 28th June 2024, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. And there is a guideline from 2022 onwards one from of the Ministry of Power. One of the problem in our country is there are so many departments and each department will make one guideline. Yeah. Finally, five years, if we look, there will be 25 guidelines guiding 25 directions. This is also a problem. I hope Mr. Amrit uh, agreed to me. Not now. Yes, maybe That I is true. There, there are, I mean, contradictory guidelines available. Yeah. Uh, Shivaji Biswas, you want to speak? Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, I have already um, get uh, got my answer through oh, wonderful, your sir. write up. I don't have to ask anything. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Rajan Menon wants to talk. I'll unmute. Very short and sweet question. Yeah. Very nice to uh, see. And the uh, governor, sir, with uh, so much of pain and throat, uh, giving such a uh, dedicated uh, uh, address to the public. My question is, uh, shall we have a, a, a template for EV charging stations, earthing norms, for since uh, that industry is fast growing and uh, nobody knows what exactly to uh, do on the earthing system since it is having multiple uh, sources of earth. Uh, Two gun of DC uh, with the 30, 30 kW, then scooter charging, all those things will be available for a, a station. And uh, we need to have a separate uh, lighting circuit or essential power supply on supply an EV charging station. Shall we have a just a single line diagram in a published in uh, NFE uh, as a uh, benchmarking uh, earthing uh, drawing? Then it will be helpful for the public at large. That is my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Apavu sir wants to talk. I'm giving the permission allowed to talk. Apavu sir, welcome, sir. Sir, you have to unmute. Apavu sir, can you unmute and... Uh... Yes, yes. I'm audible. Yes, yeah. audible. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. It's a wonderful presentation by GK. Especially, I am concerned with the last part of the, it's an embarrassing one. Actually, uh, if the IoT-based device is installed as per government norms and any fire happens, then who will be the responsibility? The consumer, as per regulation, the consumer is responsible for every circuit as per regulation. And there is a safety regulation uh, in our country under the by the Central Authority and there is a National Electric Court and there is an uh, IS-732 wearing practices. But in, by avoiding all these uh, norms prescribed in the standards, codes and regulations, how could it come without the knowledge of three, these three entities that is BAS, CEA and Ministry of Power? How there could be a regulation or instruction uh, which can comfortably override these three important uh, entities in our country. It's quite, it can happen in our country only. It's really, uh, I, we couldn't understand. See, regulation says clearly, and wearing practice says clearly, and IoT device, you see, it will become an illusion if there is no, see, IoT is nothing but a device which can monitor and give information. But the safety subject is not monitoring and informing. It should be automatic. It should be protected automatically. That's why the word automatic protection, everything is there in the standards. But it will send SMS and it will 
appraise yeah. the people they will come before that everything will collapse so what we can do the consumer can provide this illusionary device and they can claim if anything happens the person the department the ministry which issued these instructions will be responsible not the consumer i'm sorry to say this is my opinion and nfa has to bring it to the highest level of uh, the country not the ministry our our ministry of power ca bas and even the uh, prime minister of office because day to day we are losing 35 lives uh, out of electrocution and electrical fire it's a concern we will take it forward thank you sorry thank you sir our general secretary secretary general uh, rapao sir of nfe and also former uh, uh, chief electrical inspector of tamil nadu who just spoke to spoke to us you know he is also raising very serious concern about so called iot devices monitoring electrical devices can save lives there is no electrical short circuit and uh, so on so on uh, i'm sure our mumbai chapter of mumbai they were all most present here also take up this very seriously with the government you know uh, this is uh, this can uh, in a huge uh, cost that you know the people consume as a consumer you need to invest huge money into this to make it uh, you know uh, uh, applicable to the new standard or a guide a government order it's a, it's a geo government says you must every building must have it but uh, how much uh, how, how much money that you can pump in god only knows and this we need to take it up seriously with the uh, government of maharashtra let's see how we move it and uh, we have a uh, uh, last question i'll take uh, for today ravi verma uh, is there mr ravi verma are you there i'll allow you to talk yeah hello good evening sir good evening sir uh, as you know the power we received from the government like this form is a fluctuate fluctuating in nature so to protect our equipment we will be using stabilizers uh, so when sometimes like stabilizer is you now it's itself become a cause of accident so what protection should we take to like stabilizer to be stable or any alternate there uh, to the stabilizer actually, actually using stabilizer creates more problem to you example once when the stabilizer in is in boosting or bucking mode then the impedance of the circuit is increased as a result safety is at risk protective the operation automatic disconnection of protective devices may be a problem number 2 as per the rules regulations the electricity the distribution company is supposed to give you electricity which is within certain tolerance so such drastic fluctuations where we need to use an uh, stabilizer that situation has to be avoided by the uh, um, discom but unfortunately the situation of our discoms uh, all of us know very well more than that there is a third problem uh the fault in the hd system is creating failure lot of failure in the low voltage consumer premise so the problems are already explained in is732 especially in class 4.5 but uh, who will implement is the question uh we are also putting our uh, efforts to educate the discom uh on simple measures with which uh, these safety measures can be implemented i would recommend apau sir you would like to answer anything on this nothing sir nothing sir nothing i have expressed my concern already yeah, yeah. thank you thank you thank so you. Take some time thank you very much okay. i'll have another gentleman uh, uh, can you talk mr sail okay. like thank you can you hear me now am i audible yeah yeah okay so i am from punto corporation jaipur so we have made a device which have installed in our homes and offices and industries we are uh, 100% making safe that there will be no incident of fire because of short circuit why because in case of short circuit our device if installed completely shuts down the power supply we've got this 
technology patented and there is one more aspect once this device is installed in any man you are not high tech you are talking about an isolation transformer with a protect yes. technically yes. the standards we say it system it system means you put an isolation transformer the secondary side of the isolation transformer is unearthed as a result even if somebody touches a live conductor people don't get shocked this is not technology and there is this is this if somebody gave patent to this particular device then we have to really look at the capability of the patent office this is this is nothing new this has been there in the science since the invention of electricity so during the invention during 1880s the system used is it unearthed system so then they switched over to earth the system due to the problems of double fault so don't say that this is an innovative system or this is a this is something special this is basically an it system in electrical technology we have earth the system and unearth the system you are creating an unearth the system now if you are properly rating your mcbs and uh, protective devices of course in case of uh, any abnormality it should trip so there is nothing special i hope you understood these things can be explained to a house owner who doesn't know about electricity but it will be please restrict in explaining such things to an engineers forum thank you very much okay sir uh, it's a wonderful interactive session at the end we had and uh, uh, we will come back to you with our next topic very soon and uh, evening sir i would add, i would like to add one more uh, issue i think these kind of these patented and the fashionable no shock no fire things these foolish things are actually spoiling our market Sorry to say that. These are, if you put a proper perspective, yeah. it is supposed to work. And now to solve the problem, you know, people think that I have invented something new. This is no invention. This is there since the invention of electricity. What to say? Sorry to say that the the knowledge of electrical engineer has went to such a low level that these things are also people people start believing such foolish things. Sorry to say that. Okay, sir. Now uh, let's keep moving and uh, look forward to see you tomorrow. And uh, uh, please do join, and we will come back with our next session. Also, if people are from Indore, uh, we are coming to Indore uh, uh, for the 29th uh, workshop on National Electrical Code of India with uh, partner with BAS. We are there in Indore on. Uh, uh, 18th 18th of uh, uh, October so those who are interested please do join us and support us thank you have a wonderful great evening thank you mr gopakumar thank you apao sir for uh, coming in the last moment and look forward to see you again thank you very much god bless you all bye bye